and today we will see fluids that they particularly under pressure so previously we have uh, studied the first part part one so today we will continue with part two pressure is always measured with uh, many device one of the device that we will use to measure pressure is called barometer the atmospheric pressure is measured uh, using barometer uh, so uh, because of that so we had times called atmospheric pressure as barometric pressure yes i stated here so we can see how a simple barometer will be we will have a mercury inside and uh, based on the movement the movement uh, so you can measure so to which eye it is moving so uh, pc can be taken to be zero okay, so at here it can be taken at into zero because in the top part you're only having a mercury vapor okay so it's very low relative to uh, atmospheric pressure so changes in atmospheric pressure due to elevation okay as uh, many effect especially in the cooking so cooking in the sea level and also cooking in the higher place it has uh, some kind of difference okay uh, at a particular uh, I so your nose will start to bleed because of the pressure will be different okay and the engine performance the aircraft performance all of that are uh, affected by the changes in the atmospheric pressure so uh, these are the formula that we can use to measure the atmospheric pressure so p at the end equals to rho g h h is the i Another device that we use are called manometer. So manometer uh, is something that you can see here. So you will be applying a pressure here. Okay. So when you apply, you can see the movement of the fluid inside the manometer. Standard technique for measuring pressure involves the use of liquid column in vertical or inclined tube. Okay. So you can see, and we will measure. Uh, to which eye and the fluid is moving. So pressure measuring device based on this technique are called manometers. So the mercury barometer is the is an example of a type of manometer, but there are many other configuration possible depending on the application. Okay, so all these are called manometers. So you will need to understand that. Uh, in order to measure a pressure, we need to have a device, and uh, mostly we are calling it as a manometer. So these are some some of the uh, type of manometers available. We will see one by one. So we can see here uh, the piezometer tube. So this is the first one. So uh, like I have shown in the picture, so this is a piezometer tube. So it's basically using the fundamental equation p equals to p naught plus uh, gamma one h one. So gamma is actually the specific rate, p naught is the atmospheric pressure, and h is the height of the liquid. Okay, so it's only suitable if the pressure in the container is greater than the atmospheric pressure, and the pressure to be measured must be relatively small because it is based, it is measured based on the i. So if the the measure pressure, the pressure that you want to measure is too high, then the you need to have a longer uh, tube in order to me measure it correctly. So it only used to measure a relatively small pressure. So the fluid in the container must be liquid rather than gas. Okay, so we prefer to it to be. Liquid. Okay, so the another one is called a simple U tube. Uh, manometer so it's basically the shape of it is is in the shape of u this is a, uh, is bent in u shape okay so one end is the measured end so one more is uh, what you are applying okay so uh, you can see uh, generally we will have a mercury inside the mercury which is 13.6 times heavier than water so you will have water and also mercury in the setup here we can see we have a few points point a point one 
point two, point three, and the open. The open will be equals to atmospheric pressure. Okay, we should we always consider it as zero for gauge. Yeah, because this is a gauge me measurement. Okay, so here for A is P A, and for this I one to two is uh, rho one G H one H one. Then two and three will be the same pressure because it's at the same I, and uh, this is uh, H2. Okay, so you need to minus. So practically, whatever goes down must be plus, and whatever goes up must be minus. So meaning from one to two, so it's going down. So you plus. Okay, two to three and three to open. A three to open is going up. A going up, so you minus. Okay. So if the if pipe A contains the gas, then rho one G G H one equals to zero because the density of the gas is very less. Weight is too small. So we can see. So these are the typical. Uh, measurement of pressure. So normally, uh, those times, so they will ask you to tube into the manometer, is uh, like a digital. So it's using the same concept. So as much as you can tube, okay, as much as uh, you blow inside the tube, then the you can see the movement of the manometer. Okay, so uh, this is the digital. So something that we are using. We're still using the same concept. But uh, we are using a digital one nowadays. Here we can see a few, few examples. So measurement using this YouTube manometer. YouTube manometer that shown above is uh, used to measure the gauge pressure of water. The mass density so given so the density of the mercury. So we have two material. First is the is water. So water normally we will put dash. And mercury, we will put slash okay, like this. So we know this is the second material, which is mercury, and uh, the, the mass density is given 13.6 times 10 to the power of 3. So what will be the gauge pressure at A? So now you normally will ask to measure at B or A. Okay, so they have given all the I, which one is 0.5, and D is 0 0.7 above BC. Here BC, so the idea is the H H two is zero point seven meter. So based on this, you can measure so the row of a Q. We have a two so one P and Q. So P the density is one point zero times ten to the power of three, and Q the mercury is thirteen point six times ten to the power of three. So H one and H two is given. Okay, from here, we know pressure B and pressure C must be the same because it's in the same I. Okay, so based on that, we can uh, create some equation. Okay, so first, you need to see the left hand side, then only you see the right hand side. So we see the uh, left hand side first. So PB, so the pressure at B equals to pressure at A plus. Uh, so this is uh, the value that uh, is given. Uh, it is not given. WP is not given, but they give the information of rho GH. Okay, rho P since it's a water. Okay, so you take if it is uh, related to mercury, you take mercury. But this H1 is related to water, so you you are taking only the reading of water. So rho P GH. One, which one and rho p is given. Okay. Then once uh, the left hand side done, you go to the right hand side. So right hand side you have uh, c and d. Okay, so p c is actually pressure uh, d plus with uh, rho g rho g h. Okay, so pressure at d is atmospheric pressure. So in uh, or, or gauge pressure equals to zero. So zero plus rho g h two. 
here rho g is 2 okay so since we know pressure at b equals to pressure at c so pb equals to pc then uh, you just uh, replace with uh, the the equation that we have created so we know pa plus uh, rho, rho p g is 1 equals to uh, rho q g is 2 okay so from here you can find uh, the pressure at a so by solving and replacing all the values so finally you get this value so this is how we do the calculation okay so we go to the next one so which is the uh, differential u uh, cube manometer so we have a differential u cube manometer is a device used for measuring the differences of pressure between two points in a pipe so you have point A, you have point B. So you want to find the differences. Since uh, it involves some I, so there will be a difference. Difference in these uh, two points. Okay, so that's why we, we are minusing. So normally we know near to the earth will be higher pressure compared to in the elevation. Okay. Uh, so we know PA minus PB. So we know is it moved from A to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, and to B. So it don't have an open end. So you know uh, PA, so uh, this is 1 to 2 is H1. So same material, uh, so row 1G, H1. Okay, and a year will be the same. Then this is going up. So this is going down, you plus. So going up, you minus. Okay, so this is H2. So this is a different material. So uh, row 2. Okay, then it enter back to another material. So which is row 3. And it is still going up. From 4 to 5. It's going up. So you minus. Okay, then the final is PB. Okay, then you rearrange, you will get the formula for pressure difference. Okay, that is how you use a differential YouTube manometer to find a particular pressure difference. Okay, so you can see here some example. The YouTube manometer measures the pressure difference between two point A and B in a liquid. A and B. So you can see it at a different point and it involves a different material. Okay, so you have water, subdued P, both are in fluid P and in between you have fluid Q, so which is uh, the mercury is given here. Okay, so all the information are given, we try to solve it. So you have H, H1 and H2. You can C and D are the same level in the same liquid at rest. Okay, so first you need to find where is the common point. Common point is PC equals to PD. So you have uh, two uh, two pressures at the same height. Okay, so you have PP. So uh, because it's fluid P, so pressure at P, pressure P at C, okay C, and pressure Q at D. So this uh, different fluid at D are the same. Okay. Okay, for the left hand arm, the left hand arm, so you settle the left hand side first, then only you move to right hand side. So here you have, so PC, you are measuring here. PC is actually PA plus uh, uh, omega H. Okay, omega H. Okay, so that's, that's the only equation for the left hand side. Okay, you move to the right hand side, so you have two plates, uh, two, two material involved. Okay, so you are measuring here PD, PD equals to PB plus omega. Okay, so uh, the height here is not given. So, but it's given the total height, then H1. So H2 minus H1. So you will get the height here. Okay, plus Okay, so here you need to time fit S uh, because that's a specific uh, gravity, a specific gravity of uh, mercury. So you need to time fit S1. 
which is the vp and uh, omega h1 so based on that you will get this equation uh, since pc equals to pd and then you will get this equation finally and you can rearrange okay, so you can rearrange to find the pressure difference between pa and pb okay so you solve all these then you substitute your value then you will get the final answer 54.44 kilonewton per meter square okay, so the uh, i give you one question for you to try yourself you try to find uh, based on whatever information is given so to find whether you get this answer okay, so we move to the next manometer we call it as inverted differential youtube manometer so it's practically same like the differential youtube just is inverted okay so inverted so because it's inverted it has uh, some function in measuring low pressures okay, where accuracy is the prime consideration the meaning uh, you really want to find a very low pressure pressure or uh, pressure change yeah, so you, it contains a light liquid. Okay, so we can say the example here, example three, the top of an inverted YouTube. You have an inverted YouTube. Okay, so similar, you have a water and you have mercury. So you have water, the specific, uh, sorry, you have oil. Okay, so fill with oil. So the specific gravity of oil is 0. 98 and you the, the the remaining okay this is oil this is water okay so the specific weight of water you yeah, know gamma equals to 9.81 times 10 to power of 3 so they asked to find the uh, pressure difference between a and b the a and b so they are asking to find because even though it looks like in the same eye but because you have uh, additional material inside, so uh, the value can be different. So all the i values are given. So based on this, so we can try to find. So solve the, the left hand side first, left hand side. Okay, so uh, the common point is PD and PC. So PD equals to PC. So, so first uh, on the left hand side is B. So PD is actually PA minus omega H1. So you have two materials. Uh, so since it's going up, so you need to minus. So omega H1 minus omega H2. Okay, so here you need to times with the specific uh, specific gravity. Specific gravity, so okay. Specific here, yes, specific gravity, and also specific weight. If we have a board, so uh, that's for the left hand side. Then you go to the right hand side, PC. You want to find that PC, so we only have one material. Okay, so PB minus omega H1 plus H2. Use this uh, total idea from PB to C. Point B, point B to C. So based on that, you solve, then you equate. If you equate, uh, you can rearrange PB minus PA equals to uh, the right hand side. So you can solve it by substituting, and finally you get this one. Okay, so we move to the next one so incline cube manometer okay. initially we were seeing only the vertical and also uh, the horizontal types of manometer so what will happen if there's uh, some inclination okay, like a certain angle okay, when you have certain angle so you need to consider the angle in the measurement okay so this will be the same same like the previous one, since you have uh, two uh, two uh, pressures that you are measuring, and you are trying to find the pressure difference between A and B or B and A. Okay, just at that particular place, 
you need to times with the uh, sine sine component. Okay, so here you can see E A plus since it's going down. Um, this is gamma one, gamma one h one. Uh, since it's going up, so gamma one, uh, gamma two. Sorry, this this is gamma two. So I two, okay, so I two, and the angle theta sine sine the angle. So minus. So it's going up again here. So is three. So omega three is three. Okay, equals to PD. Based on that, you can rearrange to find the difference. If the value is given, you can just substitute. Then you can find the pressure difference value. Okay. Uh, then we have a few other setup. We call this as a multi-fluid manometer. So initially, we only see uh, so like uh, only two types of fluid. So either water and mercury or uh, water and oil. Okay, and uh, only normally will involve uh, two types of fluid. So multi-fluid manometer, it has uh, more than two. Okay, so in this case, you can see, so you have water, then you have oil, and also you have mercury. Okay, similar, the, the calculation will be the same. So you are measuring the, uh, the differences between uh, pressure one and pressure two. So all the setup will be the same. So this is going down, so you plus. So this is going down, you plus. Okay, so then this is going up, so you minus. Okay, so you can find from between 0.1 and 0.2. Okay. So uh, you can you can get this equation by doing this. So for pressure one, so starting with pressure at 0.1. They move along the tube by adding and subtracting the rho gh term until reach point 0.2. So from point 0.1 to here is uh, plus is going down rho gh1. So going down again rho gh2. Okay, but different material. Okay, then you're going up. So different material. So meaning all three having different density. Okay, so that's how we are doing multi-fluid uh, manometer. Okay, so mechanical and electronic devices. So manometers are not well suited for measuring very high pressure. So initially I say why uh, we cannot measure high pressure because if you want to measure high pressure, you need to have a very long tube. Okay, at one at the open side uh, to measure the water going to uh, very high height. Okay, so since the manometer is a very small device, it only can measure limited pressure. Okay, so it's not well suited to measure very high pressure, and uh, pressure then changing keep on changing. Uh, so manometer is not so good at measuring that because it's fully mechanical. Okay, so to, to overcome some of this problem, numerous other type of pressure measuring instrument have been developed. So uh, we want to overcome all these problems. So engineers come up with other kind of maybe modern or better pressure measurement device. Okay. Most of this make use of the idea that when the pressure acts uh, on an elastic structure, the structure will deform. And this deformation can be related to the magnitude of the pressure. Okay, so what what uh, this paragraph is saying? So when uh, you are pressing something, when you are pressing something, uh, so the the body. So let's say you have a sponge. Okay, when you press, so it will deform. Uh, the the form uh, will not be a square anymore. So it will deform. And uh, based on the deformation, uh, we can calculate how much the pressure. We can do some relate uh, formula. To relay. Okay, so that's what we are doing. Okay, one of the application that uh, we we are using to measure this kind of pressure, we call it as Borden pressure gauge. So this is an example of Borden pressure gauge. Borden tube pressure gauge uses a low elastic 
and curved tube to measure the pressure. So you can see here. So there's a hollow tube inside. So the pressure will uh, come here, and you have a hollow tube. So the pressure can can enter, and it will deform. When the more pressure enters, so it will move further. It will move further. So here you have a gear connected to the dial, and the dial will start to move based on the pressure. More pressure enters, so this will move uh, further and deform and this value will go up. That's how Borden pressure gauge works. Yes, yeah, the pressure within the tube increases, the, the tube tends to straighten and although the deformation is small, it can be translated into motion of a pointer on dial. So that's how a Borden pressure uh, using a deformation concept to measure pressure. And uh, finally, we have a Borden gauge. So, a similar Borden gauge, but we are having another uh, transformer. We call it as LVDT. Okay, so we are combining the Bo Borden gauge with linear variable differential transformer, or we call it as LVDT, with the Borden pressure gauge, and you convert the pressure into an electrical input. Output, sorry, output. So you can see the setup here. So similar concept. So pressure is entering. So it will deform. Yeah, it will deform. Then what did happen? So you have a transformer here, LVDT. So when the pressure entered, uh, it will start to move in and out. Then you know transformer is uh, using a electromagnetic concept. Okay. So based on where it moves. So that point will be on and it will send the output to uh, whichever um, which, whichever analyzing tool like uh, let's say the output is sent to PC. PC. So meaning uh, initially the pressure gauge are in the mechanical form. So you just uh, see you measure. Now the bottom gauge with LVDT uh, it can send the pressure value as an output to your PC or uh, whatever device that you have to see the maybe also oscilloscope so whatever uh, whatever electrical device that you use okay so it can give as an electrical output you know, the core of the L LVDT is connected to the free free end of the border okay, so you have here so that the pressure is applied. So yeah, you are applying the pressure and the resulting motion in the end of the tube. The end of the tubes, the C tube. Okay, move the core. Okay, so you have a core here, it will start to move, and based on that, the output voltage is developed. Okay, so the more you move, the more output will go up. Okay, the voltage is the linear function of the pressure and could be recorded on the oscillograph. Or digitalized or storage or processing on the computer. So most of the modern tools they are using this kind of concept so that you can do analysis in your computer. Okay, so with that, uh, so we come to the end. So end of chapter three. So we have seen how the pressure is measured using different kind of manometers and uh, pressure gauge. And and finally, we have seen uh, with LVD, LVDT. Okay, LVDT okay, is used to give us a modern uh, way of measuring the pressure. So with that, we will see you next week. Thank you.